morning and welcome to our May 2018 customer webinar. From social media to over the top OTT, everyone is talking about video. Today, Susan Bell, Senior Product Manager of Blocks OTT for townnews.com, will discuss this growing opportunity for local media and how to get started. We also have Christine Masters, Director of Product Management for townnews.com, and Jessica Reiner, uh, Broadcast Sales Manager for uh, townnews.com. And I'm Cherry Wolf, marketing specialist at townnews.com. The presentation will take about 30 minutes and a Q&A will follow. At any point you can type a question into the chat box, but we'll wait to answer them at the end. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be available early next week. Before we get started, we do have a few important reminders. So just to get started really quickly, um, we wanted to, and we're gonna kind of try to do this on most of our webinars, we want to just try to revisit very quickly some of the upcoming uh, big changes that are happening in the industry in general, things that affect the media industry. Um, we'll go over these really quickly. If you have not heard about them, you, know, you can start by Googling them, send a ticket to our customer support, and we can point you to our documentation um, or blog posts. But just very quickly, um, we want to make sure that everyone is aware of the uh, switch to HTTPS secure for your website. Um, in July of 2018, Chrome will begin displaying a, uh, a, a flag at the top of the website that says that this site is not secure. And we believe that this might have an impact or kind of spook some of the um, some users. So we would highly recommend that you look into switching to HTTPS secure for your website. We have a lot of documentation on how to make this happen and we can um, you know, provide guidance if there's any questions that you have. But um, we've got a, a lot of people who have gone through this already and um, we uh, would highly advise that this is something you look into. The second thing that we wanted to mention again is the better ad standards. Um, we are now in the phase where uh, Google Chrome has started filtering sites that are not in compliance with the better ad standards. This means that if you are not in compliance with better ad standards, they give you 30 days before they start blocking all ads, not just DFP ads, but anything that they can determine is an ad um, on your website. Mostly this happens in mobile, but if you are uh, non-compliant on desktop, it can happen there as well. So again, um, We've had a previous webinar on this, and we've had a couple of different discussions about this, so if you have any questions, you can look on our help site or, um, you know, look at the, uh, you know, different websites that are out there for better ad standards. And then lastly is just to be aware of a big new uh, um, strategy, I guess, in the ad industry that um, advertisers are asking for viewability of their banner ads, meaning they want to ensure that the ad had a really good chance of being seen by an end user before it is counted as, as, a, as a viable impression. Um, and there's a lot of strategies that we've been working on at Town News in the last, gosh, it's been maybe several months, <laughs> um, a year or so, um, to improve the viewability on the sites. We've got kind of sticky ads and uh, overlays and anchors and all kinds of strategies that will help improve viewability. So um, if you're, especially if you're doing programmatic ads, but in any kind of, uh, even local advertisers are now starting to ask about viewability. So if you have questions about that, then again, we have a lot of blog posts and um, previous uh, webinars to look at for that. And um, we've got a lot of strategies to help you with that. So definitely take a look. Thank you very much, Christine. Just want to make sure everybody is aware of these things. And with that, Susan, take it away. Thank you, Terry. Um, and thank you all for the introduction earlier. Um, again, my name is Susan Bell, and my concentration at Town News is on our newly acquired OTT product line and our mobile app. Um, just to give you a little background of um, my kind of video credentials is um, I've been working in um, video since for, for over the past 20 plus years. Um, and I've held um, jobs including producing, editing, dis distribution, sales education, and marketing for the video space. Um, I'd like to point out this no way makes me an expert, but learning by try by fire has given me some perspective of the success and failures in the space. 
um, starting kind of in a broadcast focused company and then working my way into publishing companies as well, kind of gave, gave an opportunity to work firsthand with the challengers that publishers were facing when trying to compete in the video space. Um, the focus now, of course, is improving video creation of compelling content, distribution to new innovative technology, revenue strategies, and keeping up with the changing video ecosystem. Along the way, the biggest challenge for entry into the video world has really been a successful and, and having a successful strategy um, has really been delivery systems, broadcasting or broadcast dominating the video world or the idea that they are. Um, the business really believing that there's a real revenue potential and fear of investment. So the barriers have become less over um, in the competitive landscape is achievable for everyone with the help of digital movement over the past few years. So today I really hope that we can walk through overcoming some of the barriers and give you some best practices of what has been successful and what has kind of been a sinking ship for video um, with people entering the space. Um, I'd like to lead by saying that a video strategy is unique for each business, but there are some commonalities that can help build a foundation to get started or to boost your video business. So today we're going to walk through three areas, um, the first being wide video, um, a little bit of an update on the video ecosystem, and then we'll spend most of our time on the video strategy best practices part. So let's get started. So just to go over a couple of bullet points that we've kind of pulled out and um, think that is an, an important um, way to prove why video is important, just kind of want to run through these with you. Um, increased customer conversations is the first one there. Recent research shows that 71% of all marketers say video conversion rates outperform any other um, content delivery. Um, and when we start talking about video, I want us to think about content and ad delivery all in one, because typically when you have a, a content being delivered, then you have an opportunity, depending on what platform, to also deliver advertising. So those conversion rates are, are what we're looking at there. The second point there are stronger emotional connections. Video is the most powerful way to, to content to a viewer emotionally to connect sorry it offers attributes above and beyond traditional content like the tone of voice fa face expressions and music to name a few i think we've all experienced this um, through um, watching video a good example is you know um, emotional advertising we see a lot of those with um, tissue commercials um, but like commercials where you don't even see the product to the end of the to, to the end of the end of the message and that emotional connection is what they really depend on to, to drive those conversions. The third bullet point is rise in accessibility. Um, and we're going to talk about this um, quite a bit through the next few minutes, but the price of producing great video has drastically dropped in the past few years. Infrastructure is less expensive with the improvement of mobile devices. For example, anybody can shoot high quality video. There's been a lot of barriers that have really taken the price down for um, entry into the video space. The fourth bullet point is um, high, higher retention rates. Um, and just to give you a, a, a little stat here, 65% of viewers watch more than three-fourths of a video. We call this completion rate, um, which is more than we know about a, um, an article that is published. Not that people don't finish it, but we don't have a way to measure it. Um, so if you have a message to get across, video might be the way to go and to deliver um, the completion rate is something that we can do, which is really important for our advertisers as we kind of move through this. Fifth bullet point is higher engagement. Audiences are about 10 more times likely to engage, embed, share, and comment on video content rather than blogs or related social posts. This is a especially important um, in social media and also things that the social media um, platforms like Facebook and YouTube, um, it definitely hits your SEO a little better. Um, their algorithm definitely um, favors video other, over blogs and things of that nature. Stronger consumer attention. Videos have proven to demand more consumer attention than any other medium. And the last uh, point is improved SEO. Um, SEO on social media platform and Google favor video, they just do. I think we're all very familiar um, with SEO um, dealing with our, our websites. Um, video works the same way um, and it's definitely the favored form of content um, in our ecosystem right now. So 
I want to move on to a little bit of the state of, of video and just give you some ideas about what's going on. Um, some of these um, stats are from the end of 2017. Um, and it also kind of answers the question of why video too. Um, digital video advertising continues to grow. In 2017, overall video ad spends increase and become a larger portion of digital advertising pie, about 13%. Um, video is super important. And I think one of the questions has always been, is there a revenue potential in video? And the answer is yes, but how do we get our piece of the pie? Today, U.S. digital video viewers expect to reach 230 million in 2018, expected to continue to climb to a saturation in the next few years. Um, video is here to stay, and um, the audience drives that. It is their choice of consumption. Um, so we will continue to see that, that rise. OTT, or streaming audience growth, grows to a climb and also near saturation for U.S. households at 79% in the next few years. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, um, and I know we've all had, um, I don't know if y'all attended the OTT webinar, but we concentrated on just the stats for OTT during that, but we're at probably about a 40% saturation point across the country right now with, with um, OTT devices and households. Um, so that number to almost double in the next few years um, continues to add um, potential to um, that platform. Um, and again, revenue opportunity is um, the thing that everybody is trying to figure out there. Um, that, and really, I want to just point out that that really what we're looking at is a new audience that, that has been created in our ecosystem. It is the cord cutters. It is people who will only digest content um, digitally. Um, they're not going to consume it for through a traditional TV market, and they're probably not buying a physical newspaper is all that digital delivery and all the changes we've had to make over the last, last few years. Um, smart TVs, Apple, Roku, cable, um, and cable streaming, um, things of that nature are kind of those new um, video delivery systems. And this makes a perfect opportunity for um, publishers because it kind of levels out the competitive landscape. Um, it's not just a, a world for people that have all the heavy equipment and are, are used to that video space, but because of this digital delivery system, we all can participate in it. Um, Facebook, or digital video viewing via mobile web surpasses TV viewing for under 35. And again, that is the core cutting audience. Facebook and YouTube experience growth pains and increased concerns on monetization, surfacing, and brand safety on their platforms. Um, this is um, one of the challenges I wanted to point out, and we're going to talk a lot about Facebook and YouTube and things of that nature, nature. And we all struggle with trying to keep up with Facebook and their changing credentials, um, even as we're posting stories um, under our branded, um, branded properties, um, how they change things and make it really difficult to, to continue posting. So A, to kind of overcome that, we need to play with the tools that they like, and video is one of those but also to not depend on those platforms for our video strategy. It can be a part of it and very much used as marketing, but we do need to own and remember that just like our content, we want to push people back to the platforms that we own um, and so that we can move forward. So this is kind of an OTT note as well. Um, Netflix has recently moved into news, which is kind of a, a new headline. Um, YouTube has recently launched local initiatives, and people like Hulu and Amazon are still a little bullish on news and information. So, you know, our challenge as an industry right now is to really make a name for ourselves as local media companies. And part of our responsibility in, in doing that is to produce compelling video and content and articles in a way that people um, will consume them. So really kind of thinking about um, this video strategy and how we can put content out that is, is good, not only strengthens your brand, but it strengthens our entire industry as a whole. So we'll just dive into developing a video strategy here. And again, I just want to remind everybody that these are more best practices and not one through 10 steps. Um, but we can go to the, the first kind of point here, and that's evaluating your current, current video inventory. And I know this, this may sound silly because either we're producing some video or some people may not be producing any at all. Um, and we may not have a very organized way of doing it. Um, and we may have different people in our organization doing different things. So I really encourage everybody to, 
to really sit down and do this portion of your evaluation and, and really look at, you know, A, are you producing video? How are you using it? Um, what kind of video that you're using? Um, is it daily, weekly, seasonal? Um, the kind of video would be things like, is it niche? Um, is it, you know, are, are you focusing on um, high school sports? Are you focusing on news and weather information? Are you doing long form content? You know, things that are five minutes plus, or are you doing short clips that are 30 seconds? Um, and to kind of really kind of get an overall vision for, um, for what you're doing right now. Um, do you use video as a supporting actress for an article or is it the star? And one important thing um, to look at too, because we may be producing a lot of video that can accompany um, an, an article, but really look at your video and ask, can it live on its own without supporting assets? So simple things like a voiceover, um, that can be done very easily, um, video that contains text, um, and of course that audio component with, with your video. So, and what are, where are you distributing your video? Um, you know, social media, and again, um, we definitely want to use social media um, to boost our, our video and our content um, every time, but we, we want to use them like they use us. They use us for our content, we need to use them, to push people back to a platform that we own. And we're gonna mention these kind of four things very often, the distribution of video, as much like the distribution of, um, of any kind of content that you do, except for the exception of OTT. So we're always gonna look at our social media, our website, which will also include our mobile web, um, individual mobile apps, um, and OTT. And really ask, uh, um, you know, is it a priority for your organization currently? And evaluating, if we can go back this one just for a second, I just wanted to mention this chart. Um, this is one thing that um, I worked with with a, a client on recently, and we really just took all the video and we categorized it, and we went month by month. We did this for a 12-month period. Um, we got to see where, where where we were strong in producing video, what content that we had a lot of, um, how consistent, it was, how seasonal it was, and it was really kind of an eye-opener to be able to come up with a 12-month plan for when, they were sports specific, so, you know, when they didn't have football stories, what happened when that orange pie went away, what were they gonna fill with to be able to keep current video content out there um, in, the, um, in the environment. So establish your video goals and objectives. Um, and just like with any, any business plan or any product that you're putting out there, to take time to, to go through these steps here. Um, and the first bullet point here being the content goals, um, and that is a genre of content, and we can refer to that as, you know, is it niche or is it kind of broad? Um, you know, best practice-wise, when we're just starting in the video space, um, niche, niche content, niche video works very well, um, and it also works with your organization as you grow a process. Um, and the general stuff, too, there, you know, if you just do news and weather, um, and information, which is kind of what our industry is right now, local media, um, our market's kind of saturated with just those messages. So if you can figure out a niche market that nobody's doing, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, high school football games, something that's very um, unique to your market that people can't find anybody, find anywhere else, that's a solution for the people in your community, and you're providing valuable video, and the different platforms will also pick that up as well. Um, unique content works very, very well. Um, and the type of content. Um, there's a couple of different kinds of, of content and one that I specifically want to talk about because it's technically not video. So live streaming, um, and I think that we all know what that is. Um, it a, could be a live event or it could be a pre-recorded event that you live stream. Um, just to give an example of that, um, anything that you watch on, on television is like being live streamed, whether it's a syndicated product, um, if it's a, a rerun of a show, it's still offered at appointment time. You have to tune in when they offer you the show. Um, and it could be just an actual live event, somebody having a live stream backpack and they're streaming a football game. Um, that's really great content and also a very, very good place to start because you don't have to edit, you don't have to, um, do a lot of things and you can do as much, much or as little of live streaming as you want to. 
Um, the other type of content is video on demand, and this is the content that we go out and we we shoot or we gather um, and collect and then redistribute that content for a viewer to watch when they um, have time or when they're ready to watch it. Um, the last point of content here is podcasting. Podcasting has really um, become very popular um, and even on TVs. Our industry has been, has our consumer base has trained us that um, people will listen to their television um, and they will listen to their phone. Um, they'll, they'll use these devices in their car while they're riding around. Um, so the, the video, we almost stick in the category of video now, and that's a really, really great opportunity for publishers because we can produce a lot of podcasts. Um, you don't have to have the video component in there. Um, and then as you grow, you can have video podcast. Um, and just a couple of examples of type of content. Um, uh, it could be something as simple, and this is a, kind of a radio station example, but we have a, um, a client that we have right now, and literally all they have is a camera that live streams in their booth with their, DJ, with their DJs, and literally it just streams 24 hours a day. So that's all that it is, and they do very well with their, and they make a ton of revenue off of it. They do it through product placement and um, kind of banner overlays and some other things like that. So we can really get creative with not a lot of work. So kind of the whole point of this is let's work smart, not hard. Um, and then the content partnerships. Um, and I just wanted to mention here that we don't have to produce everything that oursel ourselves. Um, a lot of fear is, you know, I have a little resources. I, I can't go out and produce 50 pieces of video a week. And that is a really good point. You know, it's not, not something that you're going to jump into immediately to be able to produce that level of content. So um, don't try. You know, do, do what you do best. Podcasting, like I said, is a, is a good opportunity, and so is live streaming. But there is a lot of content already in your market that is being produced that people don't have a distribution platform. Um, so become the place where you can distribute um, people's video for them to become the place, your community place for video distribution um, under your branded name. So the revenue goals here um, is another goal that you should establish. Um, and some things to think about as you're establishing revenue goals is, do you want to approach, uh, approach um, video selling as bundled or standalone? Um, bundled is something that we are all very familiar with, offering packages. Um, this is a really good way as an entry point into video selling um, because you're not putting all the pressure on your video sales. You're using your known legacy products um, and your digital products to support the introduction of some of this. So they, they kind of get a complete package um, and you can make sure that they're getting that value um, versus the standalone. Um, the goal would be to to be able to sell this standalone. Um, but as we know from dealing with clients, um, it, it really takes a marketing strategy even for them. So it's very unoften that we're just going to give them one avenue um, to expose their business or their message. So the bundled approach typically works a little bit better. So the second point here is programmatic versus direct selling. So programmatic is a huge industry buzzword right now, and everybody wants it. And we're all for it and it works really well in some areas. Video is really challenging for programmatic. Um, a, are, you know, because it still works kind of off of a CTM model, it really depends on how much inventory that you have. Our vi video inventory on our, on our websites, on our OCT platforms, and even on our apps tend to be a little bit low, which makes that um, programmatic fill um, a little bit challenging because a lot of times our inventory, are, it's not considered for programmatic. And that will improve as we move forward, and we're definitely improving technology. But, um, you know, phase one of this, of the selling and where people are making their money right now, is what we know and do best, and that is relationship selling. Um, it is still our most effective way to um, sell to our advertisers and our community businesses. Um, so you kind of have to watch both of that, and or a combination of them. Um, but just programmatic selling on its own is kind of is kind of dangerous as far as that being your only revenue um, goal. So sponsorships versus CPM, and we were just talking about that a little bit. Um, your video CPM is going to start out of the gate being really really high, and people are not very favorable of paying you know sixty dollar CPMs. That sponsorship model works works really well. Um, so you sell 
time periods and and things of that nature um, and for the value of your of your content and one really important thing that I would like to just kind of mention is we've kind of devalued advertising with our with our CPM and programmatic model um, there's a lot of value in the content we work hard to produce it and um, you know we really should go out and talk about result selling to our clients because it doesn't matter if you have a million impressions or your CPM is twelve dollars if they didn't move their product or they didn't um, have any kind of results from their campaign it really didn't matter um, and then the last thing is your video budget and there's a you know there's a all of these things are considered in your video budget including some things that we're going to talk about here your infrastructure and cost um, so and I always recommend with everything else phase revenue objectives that increases with time and audience so your revenue goals out of the gate you have you have you know very little audience um, that you're that you are trying to tap into on different places as that builds and as you are more and more known for your video distribution then you can increase those goals but a phase revenue uh, video budget is the way to go there so this is also a really important um, goal and objective to look at right here um, resources are very important and we know as we push forward and budgets and all that stuff are, are a real issue sometimes our staffing resources get less and they have to do more um, so you know organizing your your video team within your organization um, can sound like you have to go hire a bunch of people um, having worked with with several um, publishing companies it is amazing the hidden talent that we have in our staff um, what people do when they are not at work um, you might be surprised if you evaluate your hidden video talent um, especially with people who are 35 years of age and under there's a lot of video editing talent there um, producing people are creating this this information to, to do things like you know um, engage on social media and things of that nature and include your current staff um, you know our current staff right now you know we go out and we have a process for how we do um, for how we collect information um, you know for our um, publications um, they all have a smartphone in their hand and they're probably taking a picture um, to include taking video in a workflow as we go out and about um, and include that in your current staff's responsibility um, is good um, providing internal education um, this goes for our current staff members the people who are in charge of producing content and also the people who are in charge of selling content um, you know one one funny thing you know we, we toss around all these acronyms all the time I joke with the town news staff and I joke all the time that we probably don't get invited to very many parties because you can acronym people to death we start talking about BMS and CPM and DAIs and programmatic and players and feeds and ROS and ROIs and audience extension and OTT well, nobody knows what you're talking about anymore and we also can't expect our staff to know what we're talking about so really take the time to educate your staff and to equip your sales department so they understand the terminology because businesses don't understand all of this stuff either but they've heard all of these buzzwords and when they start throwing questions to be able for our sales teams to be able to combat those questions and come back with an answer is so important and you know sales teams you know they're not hesitant to go sell they just want to be informed to go sell and that's part of our responsibility and probably the, the biggest key to the um, organi organizing your team is the culture shift um, that really if you're going to make video a part of your business strategy it's got to start from the, the top down um, it, is, it is a change of culture just like when we added digital you know we used to not have to post stories to the web and that was a culture shift and this is as well um, and as long as that is a company-wide object objective, then it is successful. But it's really hard to integrate, um, you know, on a department level. So infrastructure, and this goes. Um, this talks a little bit about. Um, the kind of fear of investment um, we talk a lot about you know distribution and we'll talk about um, a distribution plan too here in a minute but um, you know one of the goal of infrastructure is to create a workflow and a process um, just like we have for social media posts just like we have for delivering article content 
um, and images. Um, the goal is to publish once and distri distribute everywhere. It's really the only way that we can utilize our, our resources um, that are small and win in the video game. Again, we have to work smart, not hard. So I want to talk to, there's two areas, basic infrastructure um, and advanced infrastructure. Um, your basic infrastructure is really the tools you need to get started. And a few years ago, this um, really kind of tapped publishers out of the video game right from the beginning because um, we had to have $5,000 cameras and you had to have boom mics and you had to have all of all these stuff. Um, if you wanted to do anything, you had to have sets built and, and things of that nature. So a couple of changes have occurred. One is the improvement of mobile technology. You can actually shoot HD video from your phone. Those phones have attachment sets um, that you can put lenses on, you can do phone tripods, you can attach microphones to them. So instead of a three, four, five thousand dollar or more setup, then you can really have a few hundred dollars, two to three hundred dollars, and you can have a full setup for going out and shooting your video. So um, it's definitely the way to start um, versus going out and buying a bunch of ex expensive equipment. You can definitely grow your equipment um, as your revenue increases. Um, so microphones, we talked about that. Um, editing equipment, I would consider basic equipment. Um, there is uh, really high-end editing equipment and really low-end editing equipment. iPhone offers an editing equipment that's probably not sufficient enough. Um, and then you have things like Final Cut Pro, which people use you know, to produce movies. And then you have middle of the road stuff. And these are all things that you think about when you start doing your you know, revenue budget. These decisions about you know, what kind of equipment that you wanna have. But there are companies like Adobe and things of that nature that have very inexpensive, like $50 a month licenses for all the editing equipment that you need for video. So you shouldn't, that's really not a barrier anymore. Um, and live stream capabilities. Um, you know, they have live stream backpacks that are not very expensive. Um, live streaming, you know, used to really be specific to TV stations and now with IP delivery and all this um, great technology that is invented, um, anybody can do live streaming um, with a little equipment and a live stream provider, which we'll talk about here in, a, and in just a second. Um, you'll be good to go for some of those. So the basic infrastructure can be very inexpensive, but you do need to take into consideration there is some cost, but it is it is very achievable um, now and definitely not going to make your um, your budget kind of a sinking ship. So the advanced infrastructure really is um, kind of divided of everything that you see there, the video management system and your um, live stream provider. That is a way that you can organize your video. So your content management system, we all have a website, that's a way to organize all your content. Um, your video also needs to be organized in a way to do that. We can continue to distribute things on each platform individually, but to really have a tool that can get your video anywhere that it needs to go, um, that the quality can be measured, smart decisions can be made. If you publish a video, it says, hey, I'm on a mobile device, I need to be this resolution or hey, I am on an OTT platform, I need to be this resolution. Um, also to these video management systems, they do accomplish the publish once, distribute everywhere, um, and then you own your distribution. And one thing that I wanna point out here is that you know um, when we're distributing to places like CMS, or I'm sorry, YouTube and Facebook, once our video is on those, or on those places, if that's the only place we're we're putting them, and I know YouTube came out and they said, we have a free video management system, but their video management system is not com it's not compliant with, with all other platforms. So they own the content and they kind of block it from distribution um, from everybody else because they want you to use YouTube's tools. For example, we won't get too lost in the technology of this, but um, the um, if you have video on your website, you have a player. If you have a video management system, that video management system provides that player. When you pay for that service through um, through a video management system provider, then you own you can own the distribution of that content. When you put it on YouTube and depend on them to do it, um, then you do things like share revenue. Um, you're locked into rules like you are on Facebook. They can change those anytime. 
Um, and they also don't distribute to things like OTT. It doesn't work. You've got to be able to take like raw feeds and things like that that point it to these platforms and YouTube doesn't allow you to do that. So whereas it is, should be a part of your video strategy, it definitely shouldn't be the only part. And if you're going to make a real business out of your video, this video management system portion of it is really important. And if you are going to um, enter the live streaming space, having a live stream provider is very important. They handle things like quality of video. Um, they also handle your distribution. They handle all your resolution um, and things of that nature. So you can concentrate on what you do best, which is the, the producing of the content. Um, and then and then let technology help you make sure that it's going to be really solid um, wherever you distribute that. And we actually have one of our um, uh, video services um, uh, representatives on the call today with Jessica. So I know that y'all may have some questions about those infrastructures. Tommy just actually reached recently acquired Phil 59, um, which is a video management system and a live stream provider. Um, so we're really happy that we can offer um, all of these solutions for your video infrastructure under one umbrella of Town News. Um, so I know we'll have a bigger webinar um, in the future um, where they are able to share all their products and services with you. But for today, if you have any questions, we could definitely set up a separate demo or, um, or answer questions at the end. So um, crafting a distribution plan um, is, is really important. You can have the best video in the world and it can be the best story. And really the, the objective of goal of your video strategy is where you're gonna place these videos and why is really important. So again, these four points that come up, how and how are you gonna use this video on your web, um, your mobile, your tablet, your OTT, your social platforms. Um, all video does not have to go all places, um, but you definitely need to have a, a strategy for your distribution. So as you produce things, that, that workflow um, and procedure is established. Um, and I've kind of beat this point home, but the own brands versus um, distributed content. So distributed content is what you're going to be putting on YouTube. It's what you're going to be putting on um, Facebook. It's what you're going to be using as an audience extension. So your audience is there or Facebook's audience is there or YouTube's audience is already there. That distributed content can reach that already established um, audience. Your owned brand um, distribution is, is kind of what we've talked about thus far, and it is going to account for your audience expansion. Really the goal of our video is to gain exposure, and we can do that through our audience extension, but capture an audience that we don't have right now. Um, this the whole video space is not to replace anything that you're doing, but it is to capture an audience that may not digest um, content the way that you're delivering it now, but they may digest it a different way. And if you're attacking all angles, if you're giving a written word and you're giving an image and you're giving um, a video and you distribute that on the appropriate video content platforms um, along with your word, then, then you're capturing 100% of your audience versus cutting that video space out. So, um, and then we own this and kind of, you know, when you're, you know, the, the best thing about your, your own to brand distribution system is you own your content, you own your revenue. Um, nobody can ever take your inventory away from you. It's not going to be a rev share. There's not going to be any rules change where you can't use your own inventory or somebody can buy or sell your inventory unless you give them permission for things like backfill and programmatic. So I just think that's a, a super important point. Um, and measuring our video success. Um, this is a step that a lot of people may leave, leave off, and I think it's probably one of the most important steps, um, and that is pay attention to our video. As you get into this space, it is more important to ever, especially right at the beginning, to really look at your analytics. There's such great video analytics out there for any platform that we do, and I know we all look at Facebook analytics right now and our website analytics. Um, video analytics, you can, there's just a lot of different um, of things that you can check on for performance. Um, on all of these things. So we want to track our performance. Um, you know, I always say that it takes a special person to um, be able to track and, and really be able to shift and make adjustments for um, video, depending on, on what the analytic movement is. So you may want to establish a point person for that. And, you know, the whole point of that is so that you can measure, adjust, and improve. And Phasing our strategies, and we've talked a lot about that. We've talked a lot about, um, you know, how to dive into revenue, um, why 
why we want to um, look at direct selling versus um, programmatic, why we want to look at a bundled approach, um, why we want to look at a, a bundled approach versus um, standalone products. We definitely have to have a phase. And you know, I think the most important thing about video is people get very overwhelmed when they immediately take their headspace to CNN and think that's what we have to do. Um, we have to walk before we run. Um, I think our foundational uh, approach is just to be strategic and plan smart. Plan, you know, you, you can't add like, you know, a ton of investment on the beginning of this before you have revenue coming in and there's a way to accomplish that. It takes a little time to plan structure and budget your resources. Um, you know, customize, customizing the plan to fit your goals and objectives and grow into your video strategy and phases. And remember that you don't have to do it all yourself. Um, you know, there are, there's content partners out there um, and there's people to help. I know Town News' team is here to help. We, we do believe that video will be successful for the publishing world. Um, and we are excited about diving into helping everybody get there. Um, I know we've had a lot of discussions, especially with OTT, because that seems like a really kind of um, sexy product and it is. But we really have to look at all of these things that we've talked about today before we're ready for that because that's part of our distribution plan and we really have to kind of take care of, of all of these things first. So that's just a broad overview of um, some things to look at as an organization um, and we can definitely dive in, take a deeper dive um, if anybody has any questions. All right. Thank you, Susan. That was a lot of really great information. And as a reminder, you can enter your questions into the chat box. Um, we have... Uh, looks like we have a question. I think you went into everything so well, people don't have any questions for you. But referring to higher engagement of video, is the figure that audiences are 10 times more likely to engage with video based on video shared directly to social media platforms? Or share, or does it include links to video on outside sources like our website? It would, think, it would include, yeah, links to outside sources like your web, website. Anywhere that has a shareable um, opportunity, um, including your website, would be a part of that statistic. If you'd like to stay connected with us, uh, you can find documentation on a lot of this at help.blockcms.com. You can always call our support line or visit our support website at support.townnews.com. Call 800-293-9576. We have a great partner community where you can share best practices and trips. Oh, we just got a whole bunch of questions. Uh, do you have pre, post, advert inserts for your video content, and what's your thinking about if is this useful? Um, the answer to that is yes, but depending on what platform. So the pre-roll is going to be your common um, advertising portal throughout pretty much any platform. Um, you know, Facebook, you have to work within their confines, but on your website, then it would definitely be pre-roll. Um, don't concentrate on, on mid-rolls right now on the platforms, but definitely on OTT for the live streaming opportunity. We definitely um, are working on the, the mid-roll opportunity there. But with your video on demand content, um, especially with it typically being shorter content, it's really not necessary to have mid-rolls. If you have a pre-roll advertising opportunity and you only have a two-minute piece of video, um, it's kind of a lot to ask of a consumer to sit through another commercial during that short-form content. Susan, this is Jessica, Field 59, well now Town News. I wanted to add that on the Field 59 products, 99% of our publishers use DFP, and we can sync with your DFP ad server so that you can still run flights and rotations. So we support pre-roll, post-roll, mid-roll companion banners on VOD and live streaming. So you can start thinking about, like what Susan was saying, if sports is where you want to focus and you want to go out to high school sporting events, you could run halftime show specific sponsorships. Uh, so there's a lot of great ways to start customizing your ads uh, to help you monetize video with Field 59. So Jessica, while we've got you on the phone, how do we learn more about Field 59 and how it integrates with Blocks? We will be having a webinar soon. Yeah. And I'm also happy to talk to anyone on the call. Um, you can reach me through probably by calling uh, Town News or your regional sales person, and they'll connect you to me. I've been doing a lot of demos for the different regionals and just trying to get the word out on Field 59 and how it's helping our newspaper publishers. We traditionally started working with television broadcasters, but newspapers have been our most uh, quickest growing industry right now. So I have definitely have a lot of examples and case studies I can share with you and how other newspapers of different sizes are really having success with video. Great. 
I think this is a question for Susan, maybe. What do statistics say is the best length for video or audio podcasts? You know, podcasts really the toleration point is longer. I mean, people, you know, watch or listen to book audio and things like that, especially when they're traveling. So I, I don't think that there is a too long um, podcast. But I think if you're doing like news and information or updates or things of that nature, you know, I think, um, you know, we're doing a lot of testing um, right now with with that stuff, you know, a, a two, three, four minute um, um, link for for really kind of niche content like that. But if you're doing a long form, you know, uh, sports analysis show, I mean, people are going to stay with you almost like TV programming. So you can produce those half hour podcasts and it goes over very well. How do you incorporate SRT or captions into videos? That's a great question. So, um, fortunately, right now, it's not necessarily governed. Um, so, captioning is something the broadcast in industry is is challenged with legally, or charged with legally. Um, on the digital platforms, they're not mandating it right now, so that is a, a good thing. Um, but there are systems and and things that we how we can get captions on there. Um, really, kind of all of our platforms distributions um, we we have that closed captioning I know Phil 59 um, deals with closed captioning as well so it's, it's equipment um, things you have to kind of run through to get that um, captioning on there but there are ways to accomplish that um, if if you want to do that and then the of course the technology of the platforms turn that on and off at the user's convenience I'll add a little bit more to that so our broadcast partners like Susan said are mandated to have captions on online video if their video first ran on air. So we have the ability to take their broadcast captions and mux it into the video through the Field 59 system so it stays with the video when it's online. For our newspaper partners or for video that didn't run first on broadcast, we do have a captions editor. So it's not speech to text, it's you can mark an endpoint, type in a, captions and, a caption and save it. So we do have a captions editor within the Field 59 VMS. Awesome, thank you, Jessica. Does Field 59 have 24 7 streaming? We do. That's one of our most popular setups, actually. So, primarily with our broadcasters, they will do 24 7 streaming, and we have some Field 59 hardware. So, it would require two hardware boxes that would live um, in your property that we would be able to support remotely. So, if you do want to grow to 24 7 streaming, we have specific hardware and support for that. Great question. Are there best practices for uploading videos in the field to the Town News phone app? And I'm, I'm guessing they're talking about Blocks Go, so this might be a question for Christine. Um. Yeah, if you're talking about the Blocks Go, we do have an upload mechanism that will upload um, both photos and videos directly from your phone into the Town News system. And I mean, Jessica, if you want to talk about the Field 59 integration? Sure, yeah, at Field 59 we have two apps that we utilize. One is a Field 59 branded app. That's basically a streamlined version of the VMS. So you can definitely get to the video management system on Safari or something from your phone, but the app is a really clean way to allow you to search for a video on your phone, tag it with keywords that allows you to create uh, different little workflows like smart playlists. So if you're out and there's breaking news, you could tag a video with you know, Willow Creek Fire, and it'll go to the right playlist that you set up ahead of time. So we have an app for posting video. We also have a partnership with Wowza, and they have an app called GoCoder, and it's free, and that allows you to live stream from an app. So you could essentially live stream from your phone or an iPad with very little overhead um, and start going out and doing all these great ideas that Susan has outlined. And we have, right now, um, the partnership with Town News and Phil 59, we have a syndication channel that will bring in all Phil 59 assets immediately through syndication, um, automatically, and those can be assigned to our remote video asset, um, asset type, which means that they're created as kind of a, a real um, asset within our system. It's not like an HTML asset. Um, but the really great thing about that is that if you know, any kind of code or anything changes in the future, those can be automatically rewritten on the fly. There's no, you know, the, the, the danger with importing HTML assets from any kind of external service like YouTube or anything is that at some point in time those things change and then you have sort of dead assets in the system, which we don't want to have. So 
this way, we've, we've developed this um, mechanism that helps those be like true assets in the system and can be reconfigured uh, through software if necessary. So we have a really great kind of automated system to take in all of those assets from um, the, the video provider. Wondering about video players on town news sites, it seems vast tags only work as pre-rolls, correct? Is there any way to make vast tags to run outside of pre-roll? Um, if you're talking about, I believe that there's they, they do support post-rolls, although I mean, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of post-rolls because they just kind of close the thing, you know, but, but um, there's also a, uh, um, the, with the, uh, the, the browser, you know, we're using the DFP, so then we have the um, companion ads and that sort of thing as well, and um, I believe that as of several months ago, it, 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 it does the mid-roll as well. So um, we're just using the, um, the video.js um, integration, and again, that has the, the DFP fast player. And you just set essentially an ad tag in DFP um, to be able to play that before the, the videos. All right. I think we got most of the questions <laughs> answered. Thank you, everyone, for sending in those questions. Um, Again, you can stay connected with us. We have several newsletters you can sign up for on our website. If you go to townnews.com and visit the news page, there's a form. You can uh, say which ones you are interested in. Share best practices at the partner community. You can check the status of our service at townnews.status.io. You can follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube. If you have more questions or you'd like more information or you just want to get connected on more with video, you can contact your regional sales representative. And with that, I thank you very much for joining us today, and we will see you next time. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, everyone.